it's uh, almost time for lunch. <laughs> no, 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 is that nice? Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to talk about Rajasthan's state animal uh, to this audience here, and I'm very grateful for Dr. Mokta and Dr. Mukham for inviting me here. And, yeah, and bringing me to beautiful Alpha. Yeah, so the topic of my uh, talk is how camels actually can help conserve biodiversity in Rajasthan. Now, if you look at the global trend, population trend of large camelids, which encompasses the Bactrian camel and the, the two armed Bactrian camel and the one humped dromedary, you can see that from the 1960s, until 2017, there was a it trapper. The population globally trapped. If you look at the red line, uh, which is from China, you can see that the population it went up a little bit and then it went down, and then in around 2010 it started to go up again. And now, if you look at the green line, which is from India you can see that the camel population is just going down and down and down um, and it's actually going towards extinction even though the camel is the state animal of Rajasthan because the camel population was going down on the 30th of June 2014 the Rajasthan cabinet declared the camel state animal and actually nobody initially knew what that meant. Uh, the right now, the traditional camel herders, they were very confused. They kept calling us and saying, now does it mean the government owns all the camels? Does it mean we can't do camel safaris anymore? There was total confusion. But that confusion then cleared up in 2015 when the Rajasthan Camel Prohibition of Slaughter and Regulation of Temporary Migration or Export Act prohibited slaughter and movement of camels across state borders. And this was a, a move that had maybe probably good intentions, but it had actually the, exactly the opposite effect of what was intended. And after that, the India's camel numbers went down much further. And uh, by now, we probably only have about one five black camels uh, left in Rajasthan, uh, which is like a decrease of more than 90% because uh, India had about one and a half uh, core camels earlier. <laughs> At the same time, the Pushka Fair, which used to be, it's always advertised as the biggest camel fair in the world, it's actually now a horse fair. Uh, there are practically no camels coming there anymore. And this is the current situation. The camels have become worthless and they are now smuggled across the state border and then what regularly happens, they get rescued again by animal welfare people uh, then collect money to send them back to Rajasthan where they say the camels belong. And this is what happened earlier this year. In May, 111 camels were rescued in Nasty City and then they were put in a local Goshala where they lost condition. And then uh, they were trying to make arrangements to bring them back to Rajasthan. And uh, uh, then after, because it's very expensive and it's also very bad for the camels to be trucked back to Rajasthan, some people of the Raika community, the Raika are the traditional camel herding community of India, they walk them all the way back uh, to Rajasthan. Why? Uh, so why this was happening, why these cameras were in the, in the Goshala, their condition got a lot worse and nine of them died 
died right there, and uh, they had to go back to Rajasthan. Media got upset about that, but what actually happened was when the camels arrived back in Rajasthan, they were in better condition than before because they had opportunity to move and to also eat the forage on the way. Whereas in the Goshala, they were confined together, they got skin disease, mange, and they were also, nobody knew how to feed them. They were giving them some concentrate, which the camels didn't eat, so they starved even further. So, so this is the situation we have. And what is the solution? Um, if you look at the needs of the camel, they need a grazing and browsing area. They're not suited to stall feeding and being kept in confinement. They also need care. They're not wild animals. They, they have been living together as humans for thousands of years. And what they need most of all is a purpose, an economic rationale. The people who look after camels, they need to have be able to make a living from them, which at the moment is not possible. And now, yeah, so, uh, the association between camels and biodiversity, according to traditional knowledge, they raise on 36 different types of plants. This is traditional knowledge. Actually, they do uh, use a lot more plants, but I mean, this, this number is kind of fixed in the, in the minds of the people. And most of them are trees, actually, agroforestry, in a way. So, they eat a lot of these, um, different acacia species and uh, all of these really thorny and prickly and fibrous plants. Uh, these are some examples. So in the middle of the camel is browsing on care, Apalis decidua. On the left they are eating thistles. They love thistles which grow on the fields between harvests and they convert them into really good uh, and tasting meal or they are grazing, I think this is um, or up here on the location I look the on the right. So if we do want to conserve the camel, we need to create good conditions for them. So the first step would be to mark camel sanctuaries, places that are protected from further development where camels can roam around and forage safely. These would be areas where native trees that camels thrive on grow, such as Kejli is a favorite camel plant, Bordi, Babul, and other garden adapted species. And these places would not just be havens for camels, they would, they would double up as biodiversity hotspots where other members of Rajasthan's desert fauna would also thrive. Jackrabbits, wolves, foxes, gazelles, and so on. And I want to, yeah, uh, I want to show you this slide which is taken on our campus near Ranakpur and Sadli. And this is an enclosure where quite a few years ago we kept some camels. And we gave up keeping them there because it wasn't good for them to stay in the same place all the time. But what you can see, you know, all of these trees have come up and they were seeded there by camels in their manure. So the camels also work as desert gardeners. They promote seeds just like the bears do. But differently uh, from... Uh, so we have these admission to these camel sanctuaries. But they wouldn't be like a normal wildlife um, parks or so. Because here, the, the camels could also be used, they could be utilized. They have been in close relationship with humans uh, for so long. They can provide milk, wool, dung, and also companionship. And this uh, this is a camel dairy that we established on our campus in in, Manakur, uh, in order to create in income for the camel herders. So they bring the, camp, the, the milk in the morning on the motorcycle and they get 60 rupees per liter and from our dairy we process the milk and then we distribute it all over uh, India basically. 
And we also make cheese from camel milk, which um, uh, is now being available in, in the top hotels of Rajasthan, including the, the Lake Palace Hotel. So it's a real specialty item. But what fascinates most people who come to India to visit us is that really close relationship between the Raika and the cameras. So they, there's that conversation between them, there's that love between them, and that is such an attractive thing to people in the rest of the world who look at livestock more like a, just a production machine. So, um, thank you for listening to this. 
And if you want more information, our website, camerapilisma.com, is my personal email, or you can visit our camera conservation center here on a tour staff. Thank you. for a very nice lecture. Uh, I belong to uh, Bikaner. You all might have heard about the uh, NRCC and you might have visited the National Center Central Cable. Look, the cast of our students are a scientist, Germany, who are coming to our research. We are proud of you. We are thankful to you. We are proud of you. We are proud of you. We are proud of you. ऊंट भर राजस्थान का है और बिकलेर में यू कैन एंजॉय द आइसक्रीम मेड अप ऑफ मेड अप ऑफ कैमल मिल एंड द कैमल कॉफी कैमल कैमल मिल लस्सी कैमल मिल कॉफी यू ऑल एंजॉय एंड मोरवर यू कैन सी द वन मेजर प्रोजेक्ट इज इश्यू बाय आईसीएमआर न्यू दिल्ली ऑन प्रोसार्ट पी एल एंड इस पार्टी दे आर वर्क on the role of uh, camel milk in the control of diabetes. She had requested me one question yesterday, can camel milk be used uh, for the treatment of cancer? I have assured them in the, my future project, we will take the, into consideration the use of camel milk in the cancer prevention or the anti-dietitian protection. Thank you very much. One question can be raised. One question, because we all are waiting for lunch. Thank you so much. Okay. Can I just add, no, I mean, you mentioned uh, that the NRCC is doing a lot of things, developing different kind of products. That's fine, but all that, it's all funded by the government somewhere. We need to make this, like, broad base. We, we, don't, we, don't, we need to get the private yeah. sector involved, we need to get policy support also. Instead of prohibiting cameras from being exported from Pakistan, we need to invest in uh, processing facilities, in promotion, in letting the world know what has the best in the world. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it, it needs something different than just science. Like, it needs a policy. So, yeah. You come to Bikaner, I, I invite you to Bikaner. We can have a long discussion with the cable scientists in Bikaner. Thank you. One, one question, Patiji. In brief, one question only. Thank you very much for the
Thank you so much, your presence. You are wonderful people. Bye bye, and see you soon. <laughs>
because these are the theory, uh, theories. Uh, we all know the challenges. We all know the sustainable pillars. But this is very important right now in the present context. Earlier, our uh, theme was completely based on environment and nature principles. And then comes society and then economic. But today, everything is economic because one of the presenters uh, very beautifully he presented that uh, agroforestry models of sustainable agriculture. Since I am dealing with such type of work in Rajasthan right now, so sustainability here, economy. Economy is now on the top priority. So if we are talking about the agriculture, farmers are more or less concerned with the income rather than being, you know, uh, the, the crops which we are uh, stating that this is the year of millets. Now, millet, along with millet, which type of tree species are required? If we are focusing such type of species in Rajasthan, then Khejuri is there, Prosopis siberia. If we are talking about the Prosopis and talking about the economic value of Prosopis, in local context, it is very high. But whether it is marketed throughout the world or not, here comes the question of sustainability. Whether we are going in the right direction, eco-sustainable or nature's principle or simply based on economy. Here comes our own perception which direction we want to go. So, these are the uh, goals and we are focusing on five P's. We all know about that. And similarly, these, this particular decade is dedicated to whatever we, we are losing, let's revive again. Here, the presentation will be simple revival in terms of what already Dr. Nishant has mentioned. Be aware of your own context and then work if you want to save anything. So here, restoration this global community is giving. How they are including all the eight, you know, eight SDGs in this particular uh, uh, ecological uh, restoration program is different matter. But what actually we need to do? See here. Development. Development in 1822, Ghatova Shahar. What was the scene there? In 1931, when the agencies, PHED, which is dedicated to give us the pure, you know, water or supply of water, what happened to this? And uh, see this 2002. If this is the development, the smart city, we are going to make our cities as Chicago, New York, or XYZ. That is not required such type of development, if this is the development. And if we are saying a smart city to such development, then please rethink. Rethink. And this is how we are projecting. This is our culture, eco-culture, has been completely, uh, you can say, manipulated by the people who are really not knowing exactly what the eco-culture of India is. And this is what the wilderness, what Nishit already mentioned about the aggressiveness, see here. We are losing the wilderness also. This is one of the scenes of Randhapur, very close. Whether it is wild or not, this is now the question mark. And this is the same condition. When I was working in Mount Abu, I had a lot of encounters with sloth bear. But never got, you know, in a uh, negative phase. And their coexistence was there with their bear. So, such type of, uh, uh, you know, mutual understanding was there in earlier societies, not in the nowadays societies. We all know about the biodiversity. I, I will just skip all these things because I will just show the sustainable development goals execution part. What exactly we did. Now, this is the scope of SDGs in India. Go for the sustainable development goals execution in village area because still our heritage is there in rural areas. 65% of Indian population is still in uh, rural areas and they are somehow they know about what exactly how to cope up the present day challenges. They are having their own ethics principles which we lost in our urban culture. So my submission of my work here is something focus on rural communities and that's what uh, I, I, I am just presenting here the principles that could be differ from site specific uh, areas as earlier it has been mentioned. So this is just a principle which I am giving here. 
it is not completely as such applied to any of the areas. It's, it differs from uh, side to side. We already know about the three diversities. But when we talk about the genetic diversity, the modern tools, biotechnology interventions are required. When we talk about the species diversity, lot many you know uh, theories or uh, some uh, classroom studies are required. But ecosystem diversity, we all are with us. They are all around us. How? Let's have some examples. Now see how many species is still. It is a question. We have to find out the real answer. And you all are from some scientific background. You know. What is the real uh, number of species on this planet is? We know the management uh, techniques, conservation. I will not go into details. All these are the networks which I think many of you are uh, members. So this is what actually I am focusing on. Indian perspective. Sustainability is not a new term for our Indian culture, already it has been mentioned and we all know. Unfortunately, somewhere we are missing that harmony with our nature, coexistence. It has been already mentioned. So these all, two, three words, they are not the words, but they are in holistic approach, applicable to all the SDGs. Every SDG has got the same principle. Take it, take any example, all the 17 goals, whatever they are having the targets, whatever the indicators they are having, 300 plus, but the thing is that, how we can, you know, work on this, so what we did is that, we simply explored these few, you know, eco-culture traits, the folklore, the mythological, whatever, the mythology as it has been stated. But I will state that ancient, ancient text of Indian culture, the eco culture. And the sentiments, of course, the arts, different types. But here, maximally, you will be seeing uh, the pictures of Rajasthan only. But if you, if you are from uh, out of Rajasthan, then you can just correlate it with your uh, state. Anyway, because the same principles, I got the opportunity to apply and I got the success, especially talking about the Africa and the Europe. So both the cases, the indigenous of customary rules or laws which were there and how the communities were coexisting with their natural surroundings. So this is what the Indian culture is. Now see here, extremely uh, left hand side, you see this bird. If you are not knowing, you are not a birder, you are not an ornithologist. But simply knowing the folk notes, the folk songs of uh, Rajasthan, we can assess the behavior of this bird. Although it is migratory, but the, how the songs, they are stating the behavior of the bird. This is one point. Similarly, the natural resources, especially the water, because Rajasthan lacks water. So, lot many folklores are there which will give you the importance or relevance of water as well as its management. Similarly, lot many festivals, cultural traits, customs, traditions, they are having the affinity with the flora and fauna. This is one of the uh, fair which is related to the amphibia, uh, reptiles, herpeta fauna. So, how the snakes of India if you are fond of snakes and you want to learn about the snakes, any type of species, if you are not finding in the wild, you can just visit. This is the season, you know, this monsoon period. All such type of festivals which are related with uh, the snakes or herpetofauna, these festivals, fairs are particularly organized in this particular season. And we all know why. What is the reason behind that? So this is uh, the importance and relevance. Similarly, see the different uh, fauna which has been uh, presented in different uh, you know, temples and deities associated with deities. Every deity, every animal has got one story behind it. I think previous uh, uh, lectures, 
it has been mentioned about uh, Shivji. Lord Shiva is uh, in a whole. It is the presentation of the whole ecosystem. How it is, we know that how the water is related. Why water is associated with the uh, uh, Shiva? And let's have the uh, family Ganesh. Shiva has got snake, but Ganesh has got mouse, a rat, rat and snake. What is the you know a relation between this, uh, these two animals? We can understand. Then peacock, the Kartike. Why peacock is there? What is the relation between peacock and snake? Now correlate everything. So these are not simply deities. The basic fundamentals behind all these, you know, whatever the god, goddesses, or celebrations, or customs, or traditions, just to make a common person sensitized toward their surrounding, towards their nature. And sustainable development goals are completely doing the same thing. Same thing. The only thing is that we had our ancestors took the emotions of people. And sustainable development goals is taking the help of modern sciences. Our ancestors took the help of Vijnan, Vijnan, experiential knowledge. This is dedicated uh, complete uh, side of uh, government. Now this is very important slide. Every time we, we negate our uh, you know age-old practices, and especially in this scientific world, they raise a lot of questions. This is that. Uh, uh, see whatever uh, uh, you are saying about customary or ingenious laws are uh, something old, old fashioned. Is there scientific? Is, are they scientifically proven? Or if they are not scientifically proven, have you disproved any of the fact? If you have not disproved any of the fact, then how it is that you are saying it is not proven? Let's work in this direction and then state that. Whatever the practices earlier there. Now see here, 8.4 million species. This slide intentionally I inserted in every of my presentation. Why 8.4 million species existing or existing on this planet Earth? But take out the scientific papers. If I am not wrong, Professor Chanani Sir will correct me. You will find the scientific papers mentioning that 2.3 million species are named so far. And 6.7 million species are so far uh, simply assume that they are existing on the earth. But the social scientists, Mora and Gro, they stated that no, there are more than 6.7 million species. And that is what they, using the statistics, projected that there might be some 8.7 million species. While extrapolating this statistical unit, they had taken the due consideration of our ancient text. That is published in Nature. And I think we all scientific community, if published in Nature, definitely we will praise. We will praise that. So these are simple references which I quoted here just because scientific community asked us a question, prove it. So this is what it has been mentioned in different texts. Chorasi lakh yogiyo se guzarne ke baad insaan ka janma hota hai. Yehi shabd suna hoa na, yehi line hum logo ne. To chorasi lakh yogiyo se guzarne ke baad, aapne modern sciences ne, they formed new developmental biology as a subject or embryology as one of the subject for the student, biology student to cover up. And you say, the old age, ancient Rishi Munis, they mentioned about that. They mentioned about the development biology. They know, they were knowing about the complete, you know, evolution. So that is what required for all of us at least to come back to our roots, the eco-cultural roots of Indian culture and present it, prove it with your modern sciences, with your modern IT instruments. At that time, correctly said by that professor saw that earlier yogis were there. They were knowing about that. What was IT? And recently, one uh, series uh, I have recently seen, I think many of you have watched that Asur. If you want to see the Asur, 
see that how the mythological or whatever the Indian ancient tags, how they were correlated with the modern IT tools. So that we have to do. We have to come back to our eco-cultural roots. Rajasthan is famous, famous for everything. Jahan jai gari, wahan jai marwadi. Rajasthan has some business in here. Why? Because the Rajasthanis lived in very scarce resources. But Abhav Grast Usne Rahe. And they said that eating simple, you know, simple grains will not work. What they did? Jeepo. The tongue has given a different taste of bhujiya, the papad, bhaiz. You will find the same ingredient. This is the talent of Rajasthani. And this is the talent of our local customs, the local culture. And this is not of Rajasthan. Everywhere in India as well as in the world, you will find that. The only thing is that we need to come back to our age-old practices which were experiential. That's what I am stating here. These are legal framework. Pehle niti nirdesha hua karte the. Aaj kal kanun hai. Ab kanun ho ke bhi we are not following those laws. Pehle earlier there were simple principles, the rules followed made by the elderly people or the uh, you know some respected people, persons and it was obeyed by every single individual. Today even with such stringent legal framework we are losing tigers and Nishit, Dr. Nishit is worried about sloth bear and we all are worried about different animals, flora and fauna. Despite of the fact that so much international treaties and everything is going on. Think over it. Think over it. Where we are losing and what we are losing. This is what? Which has been inserted after what is saying. See, kaise din aga hai? India go 1970 mein, 72 mein jab map hota hai, man and biosphere program. Na, in orbit ka first conference hota hai aur us mein rakte hai aur phir humare yaan pe insertions hote hai ye sab. Dukh ki baat hai. India has got already Aranya Sanskriti. We all were Prakati Purush. But these legal formats which have been formed right now, we are even not feeling ourselves safe. This is what is happening. This is simple uh, uh, Venn diagram of different you know, uh, legal forms. So I will not go in the details here. So what we did? Take the bottom approach. Don't make the policies in the AC rules. And I think some speakers already mentioned what is the need. I'm sorry to say here, I'm right, right now heading one of the uh, international program on agroforestry and I'm facing a lot of challenges in Rajasthan that policies have been made by UN in the countries of temperate zone for the tropical nations where we will find a lot of diversity and they are saying that follow these policies and same is with uh, our, you know, I will say the intellect or elite group of scientists. These are the policies which we have to follow. If we have to follow, Rajasthan is a land where you will find a scarcity of everything. And how we are disturbing, I think Professor Changani saw Already he will mention or he will state a lot of things which the desert part is facing right now. We are losing our desert also. And very soon, the whole of the desert ecosystem will be completely changed. So if we are losing all these things, we are not, you know, taking what the local perceptions or local need is, definitely will transform everything. And that is the challenge, that will create the challenge, threat to the human life in those particular sites. So what we did, we did this simple, simple, very simply. You know, theoretical, uh, you learn a lot of things. And uh, I also did the same thing, knowing about the development management program so far, right now going. And also I took the help of SPJMR, 
I think Professor Saab was from SBJMR Institute, very famous institute. And there, we discussed a lot of things on such aspect. What to do or what not to do. We have to manage or we have to follow the natural rules. SDG is what we frame, but whether the nature is requiring or not, that we have to think over. So what we did is same thing. Already Nishit has presented a lot of things in his presentation. This is what we are doing. We are also maintaining all the modern trains in our things and we are taking help of all these aspects. You know, this is our uh, prime focus. So what we did is conservation practices for sustainable livelihood. Baba bada na bhaiya sabse bada rupaiya. Paisa de rahe ho to baat karo. Nahi to bhaiya yaha pe bhashan leke chale jao. Sabko rozga chahiye. If you are doing any degree, definitely you will finding a new job, good job. If you are going for some competitive exam, just for the good salary, that is what is going on. And that's what we assessed and we work on these models and we took the community approach to get the sustainable results. What we did is that these are the different terms which we used, link different aspects and this is what the IT, IT professor already mentioned that what is required, whether they are linked or not, yes they are 100% linked with sustainable development goals. These are the lacuna gaps which we found in our rural communities, rural villages, which is required, immediate action is required. Wherever in one particular village if you are going, you will not find the complete, you know, details of natural resources of that area. If they are there, they are, then they are not matched uh, in actuality on the ground. We have to take help of IT in this sector. So this is what we did. Ghar se shuraat karna jada behtar hai. Bhasha dena bhaat ho jayega. Bade bade theory bhe sakte hai. So this is what we did is that we created one model, the sustainable model. This is one of our uh, model, residence of training center near Bharatpur, uh, Kevadev National Park in Bharatpur. High TDS, 20,000 plus TDS, not drinking, what water was completely, you know, even you can't use that. If you are living near the uh, sea, that is just equal to that. Why this happened? Due to our anthropogenic activities, water, surface water is out from Bharatpur, facing a lot of challenge. So it has been changed. It has been completely, you know, through interventions, we did this. And these interventions are not technical, in not completely mechanized. These are completely natural. So what we did, see here, water management. Now I will not go into details of how I manage here. What we did here, here you will find flood, drought management, find the quality management, everything here, harvesting, and today, and see, even not a single drop of water is going out from this campus. Even the black water from toilets and kitchens, they are being treated from biodiversity using the principles of uh, nature and again recharge with all the data which are being taken in the lab about the quality. And this is the scene. See the intervention what we did. You can see the two pictures, the comparative pictures from same angles in different sides. And this is what the diversity of this small hub. Biodiversity. This is how we are mobilizing, sensitizing even the elite group, the direct group and our local communities. Linking with their conservation practices or livelihood practices. Same model, same principles we applied to Green Munia. Focus was Green Munia for us, the scientists. Worried about the threatened species. We use the same principle. Chalat Musafir Modi or Pichre Wali Munia. The vulnerable species. Where it is now? T.C. Kasab Raj Kapoor. The beauty of that bird, we lost. Today, simply using the same principles, what happened? This is the scene. And today, the number is over 10,000. Over 10,000 in 2002, 
when he started working in this direction, number was 342. 342 was the number. And Southern Rajasthan was completely out of Greenmonia. Today, whole of the Southern Rajasthan revived the population. The Gopalgarh and Maungapu, only two points were there. Today, Udaipur, Dungarpur, Pali, Rasaman means most of the Bewar and Marwar area, southern part, are having the population of the same world. Revived. And what happened? 2019, the administration took the lead, made it the master, and the people said, Ye meri hai. Our work done. So this is what is going on. This is again another intervention. Taking the challenge of local people, using the same SDGs, water. Water was crucial for the Bharatpur people because they were from flood prone area and became the drought prone area in 21st century, first decade. All the three rivers were died. We took the cluster based approach through CSR supports. Scientifically, everything, data, photo, documentation, everything done and see the simple interventions in different villages. Resolving the local problems, local challenges. See, I am skipping why because simple principles used in intervening all these issues. This is how we did. One of the, well, structure of civil work together with social mobilization, linking with livelihood. Simple principles. And everything done and got the result. Wow result. Win-win to everyone. Scientists, they got very good diversity. Administrators, a model setup. Local people, the livelihood. And whosoever, you stay, uh, only state the stakeholders name and you will get the very position here. This is how we applied it. And this is how we did. Same is seen here. The two hours run drainage. See, what is the scene? Simple intervention. What we did. And see the change. Now 12 months river. Everything well documented and see that social transformation, how it took place. See the mobilization after effects. See this one, the people who were just struggling for water, how they manage this, water means, the education, using the IDs and everything. And this is the same area where you will find the Chambal Ke Dakar. You won't, single person can't go there. Because we were also face the same challenges. But afterwards, we were supported by the local communities. That was the social transformation took place. And see how the transformation took place and how the children took the lead. Now, Bacha Party are taking the lead, doing a lot of deforestation program, climate change, carbon credits, everything well documented in this area going on in Ravine, Ravines of Dhorpur. And indigenous species. And this is at the corporate level. Throughout India, you can see the successful examples and intervention using the same biodiversity aspects. I think you all know about the deep uh, technology. This is one of the important uh, world's biggest uh, deep system which were under our uh, uh, control and we were managing. So we developed a lot of forest areas in Sahara deserts. And this is in 2018, which has been given the first prize in Swatch Bharat Mission. Completely the solid waste area is now hot spot, the eco uh, spot in uh, Ujjain, Nanda, in between that. This is the, one of the sites. So, this is how we are doing different actions in uh, Udaipur. And this is how the documentation is also taking place, popular as well as scientific. These are the local champions. They are not from the, you know, biology streams. They are not the BSC or MSC people. But they know the identification of local fauna and flora. That is the beauty. 
See, this is formal or informal, everything. All the scientific papers which is required. This is whatever I had stated, you will find on the internet and internet also. This is about the conservation works. You will find sahapedia.org, Kevadev Neshapa. Whatever interventions we took, uh, we did here. So this is what about a small sharing of uh, the work which is done by my team and still we are pursuing a lot of things. Thank you very much. Any question? Please. Thank you. Also, 
going on in terms they were preferring something else rather than cattles. If I am not wrong, mammals, Professor Chanais have already worked a lot, Nishit is there. They will just add on. The domestic cattles is not the first preferred food of carnivores which are in the wild areas. Kevla Dev, which is protected area. So if the hyena or jackals, they are coming out, they are not preferring cattle or like that. Earlier they used to have, presently they are not preferring them. Why they are not preferring? That is another issue. But there is something going on negative. What negativity is going on? The feed which is taken by the animals. And again that feed was mixed with the different types of fertilizers, different types of chemical synthetic materials. That was the thing. And I think, leave aside, Dr. Chanani will tell you a lot about the vultures. What happened to the vultures is the third example. We lost the vulture population from bridge area. Sar Matra was hot spot. Today, no more there. And the cattle population, again, having the simple different types of synthetic materials are there. So pesticide has just disturbed the agricultural every form of diversity of the area. And one of the, my, my paper recently that has mentioned your this particular point. So that has been done. Uh, internship program uh, Inspire has uh, funded with uh, uh, children and it has not been so far uh, uh, come out but in popular uh, uh, magazines that we publish that what is the impact going on in agriculture uh, practices. So uh, I will just share the same data later. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, the keynote speaker and the chairperson and this is the beauty of IC, ICSDGEC when the environmentalists like uh, Dr. Satya Prakash Mehra and Dr. Ali Changani are talking and I was having goosebumps. Definitely Dr. Satya Prakash Mehra you spoke about vultures. We should not forget what happened in Georgia when the war was were getting managed. So definitely we all are having the cocktails of pesticides and we don't know what we are doing. Dr. Satya Prakash Mehra has joined us today only. So, sir, you have already invited on the stage for the Fences Fence Station. I will request Dr. Anishan Nani to join us.